Hey guys, uh, I'm going to do another follow-up video here for the Vifly X150. Uh, I'm going to do a little PID tuning tutorial and show you what I did and how I got my quad to fly the way it flies. Uh, I absolutely love this little machine. It is the greatest thing since baked bread. I'm telling you, it's, it's so good, it's so smooth, and it's so powerful that I don't even like to fly 4S most of the time. The 3S is so fast and has so much power and so much get up and go, you don't even need a 4S. I mean, yes, the 4S is a lot faster, obviously, but the 3S is just very satisfying, I guess is my point. So, all right, we're going to start out here on the port screen. Uh, I did not touch anything on the port screen. My bind and fly was already set up for iBus with FlySky came with a tiny receiver on the top, I believe is like an A6 or something like that. It's not the A8S that everybody has problems with. It's the smaller one and it's better. It does work quite well. So, all right, second, I'll go on to the configuration screen, start at the top and I'll just work you all the way through everything I did. Uh, first of all, we got D-Shot 600 enabled that I did not mess with that. Disarm motors, regardless of throttle value, I did not mess with that, left motor stoppable. Uh, I turned my motor idle throttle value percent up to 6.5 from 4.5. Uh, it seems to fly really well at 6.5. I get a nice mix of float and dive, so I can do either pretty well. Uh, I had heard through the grapevine this was a good value from several people, and I tried it myself, and it seems to be pretty darn good, so I'm letting that ride. Uh, I do not run accelerometer on my machine. I do not use angle mode horizon mode or any of that stuff. I only run acro mode. So I run 8K, 8K, PID loop, and gyro update frequency because I just I, I just want it to go as fast as it can. Uh, obviously I'm on iBus. I've got my RSSI input uh, turned on, but I don't think that my little receiver has telemetry, so I would have to upgrade receivers to get that. I use air mode, OSD, anti-gravity, dynamic filter, and everything else is off. Um, disarming and arming, I have it beep for those modes. I have it beep for RX set because that allows me to use a switch on my transmitter to make it beep in case I lose it and have to look for it. Uh, and then obviously it beeps when I hook up my USB. Next I'll go to the power and battery screen. I did not mess with the minimum cell voltages or warning voltages because uh, that's pretty well ironed out. They got that set up pretty well. I did have to change my battery voltage scaling to 109 on the scale. Uh, it was at 110 and I was getting some improper readings where my batteries were going too low. I was pulling too much power out of them. So I had to pump that up a little bit. Uh, I did not figure out the amperage meter yet. I have messed up the scale a little bit, and it seems to have some issues, so I might have to do some research into how to make that work right, if I care about it. I really don't care about the amperage on this machine because it's so small, it's not pulling that many amps. I'm not changing motors and things like that. So um, when I first got it, it was programmed with default Betaflight 3.2 PIDs. Uh, it was 40, 58, 70. I had to drop down to 37, 53, 67 on the P gains. The I gains went from 40, 50, 45 down to 38, 48, 42. And the derivative went from 30, 35 to 25, 25. And that seemed to smooth out the flight really well, even with the lighter props on 4S. It seems to be okay. I'm not getting motor heat or anything with the, this prop, with this setup. I did see a bit of motor heat with uh, the stock PIDs on a hot 4S. Uh, it did not cause any damage, but I noticed the rear motors were quite warm, so I did change things to get that to go away, and th this is how I did it. Um, running my rates at 1.23, 1.33, a little bit of Expo in there, uh, puts me at about 1,000 degrees per second on my uh, flip and roll, and 1140 on the Yaw, uh, the reason I've got these so low, generally in freestyle setups, I, I run them about 1,300-ish, maybe a little higher on the uh, yaw, but for this particular machine, it's so small, so light, and the props are so small, the disc loading is different than a 5-inch, so if you run a 5-inch 
rates, it's going to be too fast, and then you'll probably experience fail safes. So you're going to want to run somewhere in a thousand to twelve hundred range, probably. I would say the maximum would be twelve hundred. PID controller settings, I generally run uh, in the range of one on the set point weight and about 0.2 on the transition. I'm not doing that with this machine. It seems to fly better leaving that alone on default. I increase my anti-gravity gain to 6.9. I found this to be a good value for anti-gravity. I've heard of people running it anywhere between 3 and 15. Uh, I find around 7 is pretty good. So that's where I leave it. I'm not, I can't tell you why I picked 6.9 because 69 is a cool number. I don't know. It's just, I just picked a number and it seemed to work good. So there it is. <laughs> I run that on all my quads. The TPA on this one, I did increase from 0.1 up to 0.2 and the break point went down to 1600. Uh, stock is 0.1 and 1650. This smooths things out at high speeds with high power batteries and tightens up on the I-term as you increase throttle quickly so that does help smooth things out some as well take a look at what i did with the filter settings i'm running a pt1 low pass d-term and i leave the default frequencies and notch filters alone i have not disabled my notch filters i'm not sure if that's a good idea on a four inch with motors that have a tendency to get warm so i think that's probably going to be as far as i'm going to go with that is the pt1 uh, receiver, I also added a little RC deadband and a little yaw deadband because my FlySky transmitter is a bit uh, twitchy and touchy in the middle. So that's the way I run that. My RSSI channel got put to auxiliary 9 because I know that's where it works if I get a proper uh, receiver eventually. Uh, okay, my modes, what I do for modes because I do not use angle mode or horizon mode or any of that stuff. I only run a failsafe, an arm, and a beeper. The failsafe is on my far right switch. It must be armed and turned off. The failsafe must be off before anything else will work. I have to turn the failsafe off first and then arm. I can't arm it and then turn the failsafe off because it will not spin the props. This is what you call a dual stage or a sequential arming setup. So I cannot hurt myself by accidentally clicking one switch on my transmitter while I'm holding the quad. Uh, beeper is self-explanatory. Uh, my top left switch arms it. My next switch in from the left is the beeper. The far right switch is the failsafe. I use three switches, that's it. Keeps it simple. I don't need any stabilization. Motor screen, you don't have to do anything. This is D-Shot, so it automatically has uh, ESC configurations loaded. You don't have to calibrate it. OSD, I just run main battery voltage on my OSD because all that junk on there just bugs me and I don't like it. Uh, you're welcome to run as much of stuff as you want. If you want a thousand things on there, go right ahead. I'm just not a fan, so that's the way I leave it. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much what I did to make it fly right. So now I'm going to show you some uh, flight footage of this thing after I've tuned it. Um, I figured out that I really enjoy the HQ four inch by 4.3 v1s tri-blade props on this machine especially with a three cell super light super quick super flippy you'll see in this footage that it's very impressive and i get some tremendously decent flight times it's very cold outside and windy today so this is pretty good i'm happy with it there you go guys thanks for watching i hope somebody got something positive out of this